Hi, I'm Jeff, and today I want to talk about chickens. To be specific, a broiler chicken, that's a whole chicken. We're going to start by taking the chicken out of the package and then seeing what we're, we have to work with. So you got a whole chicken. Let's talk about a few ways that you can prepare your chicken and get it ready for your evening meal. The easiest way is probably with the crock pot. The crock pot is a pretty foolproof way of cooking meals where you put the, the meal in there, you set the time, and eight hours later your food is ready. It's almost impossible to overcook your chicken using a crock pot. Some of the things we do to our chicken when we put it in the crock pot we add some seasonings to it, such as uh, garlic powder. We use a rotisserie chicken uh, spice. We use black pepper and Lowry seasoning salt. You can use uh, many more seasonings or you can limit your seasonings to whatever, uh, whatever taste that you like. The other thing you can do is to help retain moisture in the chicken, uh, the chicken meat itself is to stuff in the cavity some, some different items such as an apple. Uh, we've quartered apples before, we've quartered uh, lemons, we've used onions, we've used, um, we've actually put sprigs of rosemary and thyme inside the cavity and it just kind of, uh, it's aromatic inside of there and it kind of gives the meat a, a good flavor. The second way we typically will cook a full chicken is just in a roaster pot like this that we will prepare the chicken itself, we'll sprinkle the spices on it, we'll put it inside of here, and you put it in the oven at 350 degrees. And depending on the size of chicken, it usually takes about an hour and a half to two hours, uh, but you wanna make sure that the meat is fully cooked and you get it up to 165 degrees internal temperature. And the best place to do that is where the breast meat is the thickest. You can check it with a meat probe or a temperature probe. Uh, and make sure that it's up to the proper temperature. The third way, and possibly my family's favorite way of preparing a chicken, is using a smoker. Uh, a smoker is an old, old technique where you're using heat at a low temperature and you're bringing the chicken up to temp uh, the internal temperature up to 165 degrees slowly while also giving it the aromatic effect of the, of the smoke. Some of my favorite wood chips to use are the apple and hickory while smoking my chicken. And we'll go over it with another video on the process of smoking a chicken. So with all three of these methods, with the crock pot, with the Dutch oven, with smoking your chicken, uh, one thing that we typically are going to do on most of these is we're going to create a brine. Uh, and that involves uh, water, salt, and a bunch of different spices and seasonings that we put in a pot. Uh, and then uh, a lot of times we'll inject that into the meat just to speed up the process of the brining. And it gives the meat a juicy, a flavorful, um, and a, a rich flavor uh, after you cook it in either of three of these methods. One other option is cutting your chicken into their specific parts. The way we typically do it is we'll take the wings, whoops, the wings, the drummies, the thighs, the breasts and then underneath the breasts you've got the tenderloins and then you end up with the carcass also which is also which is useful for creating a chicken stock. So what type of knife should you use when you're cutting up a chicken? You have a lot of different options. We have a carving knife which is going to be a wider blade um, and it's going to follow along the bone fairly decent if you need to do that. Um, there's knives like this. It's a boning knife that makes it easier for when you're trying to get the meat off the bone and getting around different things. Um, you could use a fillet knife, just a simple fillet knife that you'd use for cutting up fish. Um, there's also a small, smaller fillet knife uh, for like pan fish and stuff like that. And I would even go as far to say as if all you've got is a paring knife and it's sharp, I think it would work just fine to cut up your, cut up your chicken. I prefer to typically use uh, the carving knife, but any knife is going to work, whatever you've got in your kitchen. So we're going to start with the wings. So when you're cutting up your chicken, you have to look for the peaks and valleys is what it's typically called. And if you look here, you've got the where it's coming down, which is going to be a valley. 
you've got this part where it's going up, you're going to have a peak right there. And typically at these peaks and valleys is where there's going to be a joint and that's where you're going to be cutting through. And you're not going to have to cut through any bone at that point. So what I typically do is I will start at the top of the back and I will start cutting through going towards the joint right in this area here and then we will exit in the front here just outside the breast meat and we want to be careful not to take too much of the breast meat because that's usually going to be the the prize possession there. So as we cut in on the top of the breast here we're going to come around and as you use the weight of the chicken when you cut through you're going to have the joint right in there And then as you get through, you're going to come and turn, and you're going to have the one wing separated. Then we're going to start on the second wing here, same thing. We're going to find the where it's separated or where it connects with the back. We're going to come through, go through, and then come up right outside the breast. So there we have our two chicken wings. Then we're going to flip the chicken over, we're going to take the thighs, we're going to take the legs, uh, the drummies out next. And if you look here, there's going to be a thin layer of skin that's connecting the, the drumstick to the breast. And when you cut that away, what's going to happen is it's going to be kind of uh, hollow down there. So as we cut, you can see how it opens up and kind of goes right around where the, <clears throat> where the drumstick and the and the thigh are. As you're cutting through this, there's also a little spot here, right up in this area here, it's kind of an oval or a rounded shape. They call that the oyster muscle. So as you're cutting this out, you want to make sure you try and include that oyster muscle so we can maximize the amount of meat that we get out of this. So I'm going to cut the skin. We're still cutting the skin that's holding it. We haven't even gotten to the meat or the, or the joint yet. So now we're at the oyster muscle right here and we just want to take and kind of cut that straight across and you got a nice chunk of meat right there. As you're going, again use the weight of the bird and as you lift it the hip is going to come apart and then we just have to cut straight through and around and then bring it back out to the tail. And there we have our drumstick and we have our thigh. Same principle on the other side, again, we're going to cut through this thin skin here that's holding everything kind of together. We're going to come around making sure that we don't nick the, the breast meat here. And then as we come around, we've got that oyster muscle right up here. We're going to take, get that in there. And as I was cutting the oyster muscle, the hip joint came apart. And then you just have to cut and we'll bring that right out to the tailbone. And there we have our other piece of meat. Now we're sitting with a carcass that is just the breast meat and the tenderloins that are going to be left. And how we do this with the skinless chicken breast is you just take the, the skin and you start peeling it and you bring it around. Sometimes on the keel bone here it, uh, it has a little bit of connective tissue or it sticks on there a little bit. You don't have to use your knife a whole lot, but sometimes it'll help. Oh, you slippery little bugger. All right. Sometimes it helps just to cut away a little bit of that to get it going. And you're gonna to wanna to keep your skin. So as you're looking at this, we've got the breast meat goes all the way from the back all the way up to the front. We're going to have our Y bone or our wish bone uh, coming up right underneath here. If you look at this spot here, you can see a white line and that's going to be kind of outlining where the breast meat is connecting just underneath or just outside of the ribs. So the ribs are going to be here and what I'll do is I'll take my knife and I just kind of follow that, that white line just to kind of get a little separation there. And then where the, the wing was connected here, there's a little hole that you can put your finger to kind of start pulling that breast meat away. 
and it doesn't take a lot of cutting. Sometimes it's just kind of pushing your fingers through and uh, disconnecting the muscle from the bone at that point. Then right up above the wing here, that's where the wishbone is going to start. And if you look underneath here, it's kind of hollow. You got the tenderloin is going to be running right underneath the breast meat, right underneath here. And if you take your knife, you can run that right up along. Again, make sure you don't hit the tenderloin and you don't cut underneath the breast meat. But run that, run your knife right up along the wishbone right here until you get to the, up to the uh, top point. Some guys will take and they'll just cut this all the way through. Uh, typically what I'm going to do is I flip this and I'll run my knife blade right along that bone down maybe, maybe a quarter to a half of an inch. And at that point, a lot of times this breast is just going to, it's just going to fall right off of there. So there we have one side of our breast. And then we'll flip this over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. We got that fat line where the connective the breast ends with the with the connective tissues. So we're just going to take a knife, we'll run it along there, put our finger in there, get that separation. And then we're going to start up at the top here again, and we're going to follow that that wishbone. Follow the wishbone to the top, take our knife, run it along that keel bone about a half inch down, and then the breast pulls almost right off of there. There's our second one. Last thing we want to take off is the tenderloins. And the way the tenderloins work is they are going underneath the wishbone here and there's connective tissues uh, inside of there that you can't quite see. So the easiest way that I've found is if you take and you start the knife on the one side and then there's a space between the wishbone and the keel bone here, we're going to take and we're going to put the knife in and then we're just going to cut and then we're going to cross over and then bring it all the way down to the back. Do the same thing on the other side, we're going to bring that in, we're going to cut through, cross it over from one side to the other, and now you've cut the connective tissues so you can separate the tenderloin from the carcass. So when you run your fingers in there, after you've run the blade through, there's really not a whole lot that's connecting it. You can take and you can run the knife along the bone. Uh, most people are just going to take and they're going to separate it with their hands. Uh, using a knife you could end up with a little bit of bone where it's safer if you don't use the knife uh, or you limit the use of the knife. And there we have our tenderloin from one side and we'll get the other side here. There's our other tenderloin. The last thing that I will typically do, and I don't see a lot of people doing it, is you've got a chunk of muscle right here on both sides. It's kind of the, the back meat for the wings. And I'll just kind of go around and cut that chunk of, little chunk of meat out. And if I'm doing enough chickens, the nice thing with this meat is uh, it works really good for a soup. Uh, if you're making chicken noodle soup or if you're making, uh, or you could have just little chicken bites. And the other one right up here. And again, you don't want to throw the carcass away. This can be used for chicken stock, and uh, it turns out really good if you use the, the proper ingredients. So what do we have? We have our chicken carcass. We have breast number one. We have breast number two. And the reason I'm putting it on a tray with some wax paper 
or freezer paper is we're going to set this out on a tray, we're going to put it in the freezer, we're going to let them get cold, uh, they don't have to freeze all the way through, but then we're going to put them in a vacuum sealer and we're going to vacuum seal these shut so that they don't freeze or burn. Makes it really convenient for when you want to cook something. Then we've got our tenderloins. And the carcass, the skin that I told you to save earlier, we can put that right inside the carcass. Because when you make your chicken broth, you want to have as much of that fatty stuff and bone and all that as you can when you put it in there. Then we've got our two chunks of back meat here. I'll actually put them over here. So the last thing you'll have to do is part out your chicken wings and your your thighs and your drumsticks. In order to do that, what you want to do again, remember we've got the peaks and or yeah, we got peaks and then we've got valleys. So you want to remember that when you're trying to cut through the bone. And to make these, like the ones that you get at uh, at a restaurant, we got to section this off. You've got the drumstick for the the wings, and then you've got the other part. Um, and then you've got wing tips, and the wing tips have very little, if any, meat on them. So what I will do with the wing tips is I'll put them in the carcass, and the car then when you make your chicken stock, you've got that additional bone, a little bit of fat around the outside, and then you've got just a, a tiny bit of meat that you can utilize with your chicken stock. So separating the wing tip from this portion, we're going to take and we're going to pinch this together to make a little bit of pressure. We're going to make a cut and we're going to get that cut all the way through. So there we have our wing tip. Put that in the carcass. Then we want to separate these two parts here. So we've got our valley here. We're going to cut the skin going to the valley. Then I'm going to do the same thing where I kind of pinch. And then we're going to start up here. And we're going to work our way through the joint. Now we've got our wings and the drummy part of the wing, just like that. Set that to the side, do the same thing on this one. We're gonna pinch that wing tip. And we're gonna get through the joint. That one went a lot slicker. Wing tip in the carcass. So then again, we're gonna look for the peak right here and we're gonna pinch the two limbs together and we're gonna make a slight cut through there and we turn it over we got our valley comes down we're going to come down to where we made our cut and we'll make that cut all the way through and there we have our two sets of wings okay and then we move on to our leg which is this portion here and then we've got the thigh right there we have a joint right there so if we look at our peak and valley, we're going to utilize both of those areas. If you look in between here, you can kind of see where the muscle structure separates just that little bit between the, the peaks and the valleys. I'm going to start with the peak here. And we're going to go in and find the, find the seam in the joint. And then I'm going to turn it over, start bringing this down. Follow that little bit of a line right there to separate. And there we have our leg and our thigh. And in a minute here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the bone out of the thigh. So I'm going to take the second one. We're going to do the same thing as what we did with the first, and you can do it whichever order you want. If you want to follow this line here, bring it through, and you can see where the joint is at right there. 
following the valley, bringing that down. And there we have two legs and two thighs with skin on. You don't have to take the bones out of the out of the thigh. I usually like to just because it makes it a little bit cleaner. On the grill, it makes it really easy to flip over back and forth. So if we follow that bone down and around. Here's where a boning knife might come in handy if you have one available. And I'll put that in the carcass. And there is our second thigh. So all together, once you're done, you should have about 12 cuts with the two breasts, two tender lines. You've got your wings here, you've got your thighs, the boneless thighs, and you've got your legs. And then you've got some back meat here for um, if you wanted to save enough of that for soup. Um, and then your carcass, which is also an important feature, especially if you want to make a chicken broth or a chicken stock. Um, it works excellent for that. So after you get them out of the freezer and you vacuum seal them, they should be in all nice individual packages like this. And by cutting up your chickens this way, I found this is the best way to minimize waste. Taking the, the carcass where there's still a little bit of meat left on it, you've got inside, you've got the wing tips, you've got uh, the bones from the thighs, uh, a little bit of meat from those, um, and turning that into a chicken stock, which is uh, very delicious and nutritious at the same time. Um, we've got the back meat here. Uh, doesn't amount to a whole lot, but if you're making a, a soup or a, uh, something that requires just a little bit of chicken, uh, the back meat works out perfect. We've got the four or the thighs that you can. Uh, Depends on how big of a package you want. If you want to have more than four, you want to just have two. Um, actually, the thighs are probably one of my favorite to put on the grill. Uh, they taste real great. You put the seasoning on and it seems like they stay juicy, uh, even if you cook them a little bit extra long. Then we got the, the wings. I've got the drummies for the wings and the other part of the wings here, uh, all in one package. And when I, when I cut up one chicken, I'll typically cut up multiple chickens. Uh, so we have about eight uh, wings here, so you got a full meal of wings. We've got the tenderloins. We've got four different tenderloins here from two different chickens. And then we've got the legs. Uh, they cook up real nice on the grill as well. Uh, if you put a little bit of seasoning on them, uh, they turn out really good. And last but not least, you got two uh, individual breasts. And the breasts on a bigger chicken are going to end up being roughly about one pound uh, per breast so uh, you can plan for that and if you notice how it's a little bit thicker on the one side and thinner on the other uh, what I like to do is I'll cut this this uh, this part here off so that you've got two pieces of meat that are about the same thickness that way when you're grilling them they don't one part of it doesn't dry out the other part is more uh, juicy or vice versa where you have one part that's not quite done and this part is is perfect so if you can slice that, works out good. Another option that I haven't tried yet is you could cut a, a slit in there and then you could stuff the breasts with, uh, with different ingredients and have stuffed chicken breasts. So I hope you found this helpful and informative and good luck with your broiler chicken.